Hello and welcome. I would like to say a few words about the first global WDI QHSET conference that was held in Dubai at the end of May. First of all, a big thank you to the area managers and the country managers who provided their full support to the conference by allowing their key HSE personnel to attend. As part of the conference, we wanted to encourage the attendees to think a little differently about the issues and how we resolve them. So I thought that I would take this opportunity to show you how the conference went using our video team from Studio 52 to deliver some key messages from our personnel. Please listen carefully to the messages and ensure that the commitments made are followed through so that we can all make a difference together. This is the first time we've ever got together all the QHSE guys at one conference. And I think over the course of the next couple of days you will understand why we have done this. Welcome everyone. I wish my colleagues. Yes, as Charlie said, this is very important that uh, we don't just get together as country managers <coughs> or area managers or function heads. It's also very important that each function get together to understand what the function has for a role and, and importance in our operation. Very often we don't just think about operations. We think about finance, we think about numbers, and we think at the end of the month about, or for us, every Monday morning, about HSE statistics, but we don't very often know the people who's behind all this and trying to assist us with developing a world-class uh, service. We had a few uh, incidents, accidents, serious, very serious accidents, particularly fatalities last year that has made a tremendous impact on myself and all of us. I assume here in this room, some of you were probably not here, here when these incidents of fatal accidents happened. But for myself, it was the first time in my life I ever had a witness a fatality, or we had three fatalities last week. I really decided to do something about it. We had to do something about it. Not just employ more people, give people more training, and go out and visit the race, but we had to do something different. We are now operating, or about to operate, in 21 countries. So Niels has given us a challenge for today. We obviously have a two-day conference, but he's away traveling tomorrow. And take a note, the challenge is going to disappear. Okay, how do we stop helping ourselves with other people? You guys need to start thinking about that just now because we need to have an answer for Niels at the end of the day. Here's a key issue. We killed three people last year. We did as an organization. We killed three people last year. We have already killed one person this year. It's unacceptable to him. It's certainly unacceptable to me, and I suspect it's unacceptable to everybody in this room. So we have to do a little bit of soul searching. We have to realize, understand, accept where we have been in order to move forward. The slogan that, that came out of uh, our competition it was won by one of our guys from <coughs> weight, safety, one team, and goal, are uncomfortable with because it has to be that way. You cannot achieve the level of safety that we require, we demand on your own. It has to be a team effort. I could be the best safety guy, and, and I have some of them sitting in this room, there's no doubt in my mind. I have some of the best safety people in the world in this room. I could put him into an operation, but if he does not have the management commitment, if he does not of the support of the line managers, he will achieve nothing.
and you heard some powerful stuff this morning, but now we want you guys to start being interactive and perhaps looking at things you can take away to get every single member of your crew to be doing. And I'm going to give you an exercise to do. Kevin will give each table one and then also leave one of the smaller ones so that you can see. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. Server, and the senior will be his assistant. So just to push the junior people to speak up, to see things that probably I've seen them but didn't have probably the personality or the atmosphere to, to, to report it. So we let them make a workaround and speak up. The second point that we thought about is about the meetings. We always run meetings, supervisors, managers, are running the meetings, I think it will be very helpful if we let our junior crew also run the meeting, or at least help them to run the meeting. The third point was about breaking what we call the group think process. <coughs> when we are on a table and trying to decide something, there is always a leader on the table. Same thing when we do pre-task meetings. We are the floor, the driller is with the, the rap mix, the floor man. Whatever he will say, everybody will say yes and follow. So what we will try to do is we get someone external, we get electrician, we get the mechanic to do pre-task meeting with the crew at the floor. So we can see things that the other crew can see, or at least he can be not always saying yes like the junior crew. So you can be the, what we call the even advocate. Uh, short videos, so like in, you start in that one, you know, in the, our weekly report, that one is really good, you know. Reward the people for good things. Try or find another way to cross the culture, following up with the people. If they understand, you know, really the message and put them to be in the front <coughs> of the meeting and learn, explain to everybody what they understand from the message here. Uh, what was sent. How are we going to change that? That was the question, right? Yeah. We have the tools, guys. In our company, we have the tools. We just, I think we just need to know how to manage our people. And let's say, let's treat them a little bit to get them where we want. All right? That's the main thing. How? Now, if, if I start to do this, I need to start not with roster belts. I need to start with senior two pushers, and I need to start with drillers, nine pushers, and uh, safety officer as well. True. How are we gonna start that to change their attitude, and their behavior, and their perception of safety on the rig side? We have a tool, it's called Enterprise Excellence Skills Training. Now, when I attend first time that training, I said, oh my God, I need to go back and do this training for my guys. And the wrong people were gonna say, Peter, we are wasting our time, right? So, in that training, after I did that training two, three, four times with the seniors, I realized that it's getting better. There is the opportunity for us to implement this message for our supervisor. Then they go back to the reef and what they do to raise the culture, safety culture, and attitude of people to change 
is to go there and show to the guy how to do the job. I can bring all the weather for crew in Dubai weather for training uh, center. They do the training, they pass the training. When they go back, they do what they do. They forget, they do what they think. But there, our supervisors, our rig supervisors, that is the main key of people who can change. We want to discuss and communicate the task in a way that the personnel understand the concern for the safety and our concern for their safety as well. To try and focus more on the person and if and when an unsafe, unsafe act is observed, try to approach the person in a positive way and in a manner that the person can understand and be receptive to what we're trying to tell them. I believe that the act beyond safety and intervention when see unsafe condition or unsafe acts. If you have the courage to stop the job, if you have the courage to say, no, I'm not going to do this. I have to follow the proper procedures, the proper, the proper policy. This is the best thing I can do. One of the things that, that the client always uh, refer to us is the simplicity of the way we uh, react towards to safety. If we do the right thing all the time, chances <coughs> are that we're not going to have any incidents. The main thing is to catch the believers and the non-believers. You know? uh, people that doesn't believe in safety uh, or shouldn't be working with us, should be working in a different industry because our industry is quite dangerous, you know. And uh, so I think everybody knows. And, uh, and having known believers around us you know, will make our jobs very difficult. We would prepare a coaching plan to balance these behavior times and a, a content and a personnel who will coach. It will probably take us a six month period to achieve this. Number three, we would identify the behavior performance indicators. Example, we're, we're all bringing up ideas like time car. Uh, I hazard ID cards, TRAs, SOPs, uh, culture, safety culture, et cetera, et cetera. But we, all, we, all were, we all brought it down to these uh, such indicators could consist of uh, participation within the system. What's our system? The BMS. Everybody in this room has medals around their neck. They want to be the important person. And in all these zones, I ask myself, why can't we get a positive battery by now? Because Riggs has been there in the wrong for so many times, so many years. Each company has a diverse and complex safety management system, but all of us in this room came from different company backgrounds. We have some sort of experience line, and if we check the experience, we can come up with a number of years within this room. So why can't we get it right? All the things that we have in place are just safety nets. The timeout is safety, it's a safety net. We have a BMS system up front, so we need to use it. Push here, tell some time out to the law. Leave me alone, I don't have time for this. I show you so, such disrespect because we said, and right past we said over and over again, it's everybody's responsibility, it's non-negotiable. If someone gives you a time out for safety, you gotta listen to me. A lot of people don't respect that. I think it's very important because what you say is the we. You know, I can say a lot of things. I can say I, I, I. Charlie, you refers to me quite a bit when he talks, but it's us, it's we, it's, it's you, it's everyone here that has to do, bring this message out and, and, and deal with it. And I can't do it at all. We would fail 100%. Safety is not something that you switch on when you get to the rig and then when you go home, switch up. So what I think we need to do is we need to build that culture, that safety culture. If we get our guys to think about their family safety at home, <coughs> then we are sure that when they are at the rich sites, they will think safer. The difficult way is to take the guy in front of you and say, he's quite beautiful. I'm going to teach him. He's going to be as good as I am by the time I'm finished with him. That's a much more difficult job. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's really good to be here. I'm honored for several reasons. Usually, Usually, when you have an audience, you have a variety of people with different backgrounds. Some very senior, some very junior, 
different countries like we have now, but this audience is different. Last year, I was in the same position. Unfortunately, I had to assist in three fatality investigations. And it started like on a Friday morning, walking the dogs about five o'clock to get a phone call. Mr. Sadoon, he died. I said, what? <clears throat> he was in the hospital for seven days. Intensive care, he should have been better. One of my findings or observations is they were all senior supervisors, you know? And you think, what happened? Why senior supervisors? And people usually say, what was the safety, man? What was the program? I ask, what are the operations guys doing in relation to safety? What are they doing? Where does it stop? It stops for operations. Where do you all come in? You finesse it. One of my biggest concerns has always been, are we getting the message down to the lowest levels? Mr. Marins, Ricky, several of you in here. We've talked about the subject before. Do we get the information down to the roustabouts? Because our, our, our working crews are a variety of people from all over the world. All over the world. And you should tell you, yeah, I understand, yeah, I understand. Well, do you? So dissemination of information, are we getting it to it? Most of you, I think, are innovators, thinkers, and doers. And whilst the program that I'm about to take you through, for those who haven't already been exposed, is primarily aimed at the leadership on the rig, Whereas the program we did in Australia and currently uh, doing in Australia is for the whole cruise. But I guess it begins with uh, this little quote, don't expect your people to follow if you can't lead. For me, I'm a very sort of uh, down to earth uh, guy that deals in common sense. And to me, that is a brilliant quotation. Don't expect your people to follow if you can't lead. I think it's quite true. So the focus of our safety leadership workshops with Weatherford aimed at the leadership of the rig is to say that, well, let's have a look at your leadership skills in, t in particular in terms of how you influence your people to work safely. So I guess one of the main objectives for the, the workshop is to reinforce the leader's role in influencing their crews to use safe work practices by acting as a role model leading by example, and developing and supporting them in their efforts to be safe. The management system throws up particular issues, and we've heard some of them already, <coughs> people doing their own thing in terms of SOPs, people deciding that, you know, they don't, you know, it's an option. You know, it's really an option, isn't it? I don't really have to do this. So I've been there on board as a, as a big step forward. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, sir. It's not going to be a, a presentation system. It's a, it's a participation, participation system. Yeah. And uh, from that uh, prospect, what I've request you to imagine that we are sitting in one round table and we are talking and sharing, sharing views, infos. Yeah. And all these are eventually going to address <laughs> your, our, <laughs> BFP. Yeah. So at the end of this session, this participation session, you should be very clear. The intention is that you are very clear <laughs> your role as QHSE manager. Yeah. Right now, I think there might be some confusion that, yeah, I'm a QHSE manager, HSE regional manager, but at the end of the session, that's what my personal target. You are convinced that you are a QHSE manager. What makes you good quality managers, you're committed to continuous improvement. You have to be. We killed three people last year. Is that acceptable? No. no. We're still hurting people. Is that acceptable? No. We have very high targets. So we are committed to continuous improvement. 
I'm not going to go into too much detail as far as the training department's concerned. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into your aspect of, of training, which is the safety aspect and, and its impact. Do we do enough safety training? Yes or no? Oh, how can we do more? Yes. This yes. is your meeting, guys. Yes. More budget. More money? Yeah. Okay. The safety training we've got, does it hit the spot? The safety technical training. S safety technical training. What that means is uh, we're buying safety equipment. Most, oh, okay. Most of the rigs, we're using almost the same kind of equipment. I was thinking about having, for example, in Weatherford, one guy, specialist in SCBA training. Mm -hmm. So we go around and do training on madness. Okay. Someone on the lifting equipment, so it's more technical. Part. You can't dump safe start. Right, we're a Weatherford company. Safe Start is is mandatory for every single employee, not just specific employees, but every employee has to sit Safe Start. This training program is an educational path for people. We have many new guys come into the industry. They start off as roustabouts like me and Charlie Mills and Ricky Corins and everybody else did. <coughs> but they don't seem to get the same opportunities. They don't get the training. They don't get a fair crack at the work. Now, every rest of it comes in the door is not going to be a tool push-up. He's not going to be another Charlie Mills. He's not going to be another Ricky Corrins. But he is going to progress. Now, somebody mentioned yesterday, we don't prepare guys for progression. That's absolutely true. We do not. If you're a roustabout on a route, a vacancy comes up for a, a roughneck and you are there, it's yours. That's what happens. It shouldn't, but that is what happens. So we've got to try and give the guys some education. They deserve the education. There's some very bright guys come in the door. And they are hampered because of lack of education, lack of uh, language skills, lack of a lot of things. Yeah? They don't get the opportunities, and we don't take the time to train them. This is now our opportunity to train them. Training is an investment and every employee's future. Years ago, you know, in, on the, uh, in our industry, the safety guys were always called as uh, unproductive. What about easy money? How many people have got called over here easy money before? Oh, no. Easy money, easy money, easy money, right? Right, and normally it was coming from operations, huh? Make me wrong. Anyway, one more minute. No, I'm in control. Okay, what I did with these guys, and then I, I was checking through, well, where the revenue comes from? For me, from this guys, from this guys, right? Now, wait a minute, the story is it's very short and simple, right? What I did is I, I convinced them that if you allowed me to give the proper training to the guys, the proper equipment, the proper environment, the proper safety required for that job, production will be better and we will make more money. We make that deal. And you know what? It worked. It took some time, it took some time, but it worked. And believe me, it always works. It always works if you never agree with it. That's my short story. You, I agree with you 100%. Replacing Safe Start training with <coughs> IOSH. Well, we explained that. We can't replace Safe Start. It, it's part of the corporate mandate. We've got no choice. We will look into... Um, Chris, could you? We will look into... Um, we'll reinvestigate IOSH again because there was a... There was a popular vote saying they want to be back. Yeah, but, but the Safe Start has been totally reviewed and I believe that they've now integrated a lot of the IOSH working safely into Safe Start. So I'm reserving my judgment until I see what the, the new Safe Start training is like. You're talking about train the trainers, right now? No, what I'm talking about is uh, we talked about employee development our uh, competency program, but we're not focusing on our safety people and giving them the skills to be people people, is what their job is, dealing with senior management, supervisors and juniors. Giving, they also do a lot of presentations and coaching training roles. We need some, I feel, these guys need some assistance in being able to get up and present. Somebody asked the other week, it was earlier on this week, whether they could send their people on the 
on a, on a, on a local train train of thought presentation skills. So yeah. I have no problem with that at all. I know you'll be disappointed oh, if I don't read this one out. Oh. What came first, the accident or the safety culture? Let's leave the answer for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style. <laughs> Thank you all for coming and making this conference a success. But most important, all of you send me the reports on time. <laughs> all right, um, conscious of the time. Thank you for coming along. It's been an effort for most of you to actually get here, but I'm very pleased by the level of attendance. Surprised actually that uh, our country managers and area managers agreed to allow so many of you to be here at, at, at the one time, including guys who are normally back to back in some cases. So that's fantastic. Um, I've certainly enjoyed the last couple of days, enjoyed meeting with all of you. Some of you are old friends, and I hope you'll all become old friends in the future. All that remains, thanks to the people who have contributed to this whole event and yourselves. Thank you for watching this video. As you will have seen, there were plenty of issues discussed and actions raised. I hope that this video has captured some of the flavour of those two days for you, even in this much shorter version of the conference. Please be assured that the QHSE team here in Dubai will be following through in all of these actions, and we will provide whatever support is required to our operations teams around the world. Together, we can make the difference. Thank you.